Yes, this yes. Sunday uh, marked the beginning of a true election marathon for Romanians as they are not only choosing the country's new president, but will also vote in parliamentary elections next weekend. So who will shape Bucharest politics in the next uh, few years and uh, how can it impact the security of the whole region as Romania is one of NATO's eastern Lang members. And to discuss it, we're joined by uh, Eusebiu Slavitesco, a former Romanian diplomat. Uh, thank you for accepting your invitation. And, thank and, you for having me. And, and first of all, we, we have uh, early results coming from uh, Romania, and, and those are pretty unexpected. Well, for someone who has chased in these elections for the past couple of weeks, let me tell you, the theirs are shocking for myself and I think for pretty much everyone. So let's, in Romania. Let's, let's just tell our viewers it's uh, so far, uh, as those are really a very uh, early exit polls. 25% for uh, Cholaco, 18% for Lascani, and in the uh, third place we have uh, Georgescu. So, a bit of a shocker. A bit of a shocker. Why is it a shocker? Because so far we were. Uh, we believed, I mean, all the polls were giving the far-right nationalist uh, Georgia Simeon uh, as the second one in the runoff. Uh, it was pretty much a done deal up until a couple of very few days when a huge scandal, corruption scandal, links the current prime minister, the social democrat, the first one with 25 percent, to, uh, to these scandals and it links them in a pretty pretty safe way. It's difficult for him to surf around that. So I'm assuming this is something that played out. But this guy that we've seen in third, Kalin Georgescu, up until a couple of hours ago, he was only given in the polls uh, with six, seven, eight percent. And now we're see seeing 16 percent. So what, what, what happened? I mean, could this just be, you know, some, uh, some mistake and it can all change by, by the morning tomorrow or... Oh, I so we might we might have these uh, mm -hmm. these these uh, exit polls are very early. They do not take into consideration the diaspora, the Romanian diaspora, mm -hmm. who is huge in Europe. We have 1.5 million in in Italy, 1.3 were around uh, in Spain. We have in Germany a huge France and so on and so forth, and also in Moldova a lot of it. So these numbers they go up to 10 percent of the overall results, so we might see a change. What we know so far, and I know this but for many of my friends in the diaspora. What does diaspora vote for? That's the thing. Nobody really knows, but so far everybody, it's been 25 minutes now since we have this result, and everybody's on this guy. Mm -hmm. it, it seems that he has led an enormous and very smart campaign on TikTok, and only a TikTok, nothing on TV, uh, nothing on the other social network on TikTok. I personally don't have TikTok, so I haven't been following him. But be assured, tonight, Therefore, tomorrow, I guess he appeals everybody. to the younger generation, Exactly, right? to the younger generation, also to the generation who fled Romania 15, 20 years ago mm -hmm. to Germany, to Spain, to France. And for some, of them, for some reason, they see in him uh, somebody who speaks very patriotic, who speaks. But let me tell you, uh, this George, uh, this Kalin Georgescu is, let me be elegant, borderline fascist. He's uh, pro-Russia uh, propaganda aligned fully. Uh, he's against Ukraine. He's against giving any type of help to the Ukrainians uh, during this very difficult three years of fight. Uh, he says about himself, and I just saw that before I came here, that he's the chosen one from God. So you see, this is the language he plays with. Uh, well, probably tomorrow everybody will wake up to a lot of analysis and how it wasn't possible because th the danger right here is 16% him, 15% uh, Georgia Simeon, who was supposed to be in the second round. They go close to 30, 30 something, and that's very worrisome. Now, precisely next week there will be uh, general elections exactly. in Romania. Now, c could these two gentlemen uh, form some sort of, uh, of an alliance? Well, a couple of months ago, this gentleman used to be the, the nominated prime minister of Georgia, Simeon. Something happened, apparently, not sure what. Everything is possible. If they shake hands, mm -hmm. we risk of having next, uh, the 1st of December, the biggest political party in Romania, as a political party who is pro-Russia, who is against NATO, who is against EU, who is against all of these values uh, that we have had and which have held so dearly so far. Right. Now, uh, talking about the far right, one of the uh, most controversial um, ideas of, uh, of uh, George Sibion, the person yeah. who didn't make it, apparently. But he's the main to, figure. 
As you said, as you said, he is the main figure of um, of Romania's far right. Now, one of his ideas was to unify Romania with Moldova. Now, it's, uh, it's such a narrative appealing to, to voters in, in Romania. And is it even realistic? At this point, it's not. By the way, uh, George Simeon, he is, he is forbidden to enter the Moldovan territory and the Ukrainian territory. And it has been so for a few years. For some, someone who wants to be the president of Romania, Ukraine and Moldova right now, well, at least in our current foreign policy, they are enormous. They matter to us, especially Moldova, very much so. So this is also very uh, weird. Uh, he was forbidden to enter these countries because of his unionist uh, sort of political campaigns that he's run, uh, challenging the Ukrainian uh, territorial integrity, challenging Moldova territorial integrity, and all of those. But uh, to answer your question, right now in Romania, this unionist speech is not really up to date. Nobody really talks about it. Mm -hmm. uh, only a few min minutes ago, we've heard an uh, immaterial about Slovakia. And, well, already Slovakia and Hungary are opposing uh, yeah. any sort of military aid to, to Ukraine. Now, if Romania was uh, to join the club, uh, what would it mean for, uh, for, for the security of, of the whole region, as a matter of fact? Well, to be honest with you, this actually was the first question that I wanted to get my answer tonight. Will we join these countries that you just mentioned, being uh, sort of a maybe not straight on pro-Russia, but our, you know, Slovakia, for example, a lot of these uh, were Hungary. So I'm guessing we are not. Uh, well, this is a me just giving you a little bit of a, I think the next round will be won by this uh, Elena Lasconi. Uh, traditionally in Romania, the Social Democrats always get into the second round because they have this huge and enormous party machine behind. It's the biggest political party. And also a lot of former communist nomenclatura part of it. And that's why in all of the second round, the runoff, the right and the center somehow managed to get together and to overcome. So I'm expecting the same thing uh, in, uh, in two weeks from now. We'll see. We'll see. Definitely a very interesting next two weeks in, uh, in, in, in Romania. Eusebiu Slavitescu, former Romanian diplomat, was our guest uh, this evening. Thank you. Thank so you much. so much for having me. And thank you for watching. That is uh, all for now. And stay with us for much more here on TV World. <laughs>